Let's break down eight players that you need to try and buy low on right now before they pop off in week nine of 2024 fantasy football or before their buy low window closes. All right, let's kick the video off with Drake London of the Falcons coming off of his second worst performance on the season so far at 7.4 fantasy points in a good matchup, a good game script against the Bucks just didn't happen. Six targets, four catches, 34 receiving yards. But we all know the story here. Drake London has been an absolute baller this season, sitting as the wide receiver seven overall in fantasy football. He's had double digits in every single game except for week one against the Steelers and this past week against the Buccaneers. He's had a ceiling of 33.4 fantasy points so far on the season, and he's averaging 16.3 fantasy points per game. No reason to try and not get Drake London. I, I just don't know if this buy low window is going to last. I mean, he could have double digits every game for the rest of the season, maybe outside of week 11 against Denver. He does have some tough matchups coming up, but he also has plenty of good matchups. And so far for majority of the season, it just has not mattered. I like his playoff schedule a lot as well. He gets the Raiders, the Giants, and the Commanders. Now, the Raiders and Giants have been a little bit better overall against the wide receiver position, and Washington has been improving, but overall, those feel like nice overall matchups for a Falcons team that could be pushing for the number one overall seed in their division and could be pushing for high playoff seeding as well. So overall, like everything about Drake London on the season, I don't think there's a ton to break down here. He's just coming off of a bad game. So that buy low window, excuse me, does present itself. If you can take advantage of it, go buy Drake London while you still can. Next up, we got another stud wide receiver. That's Amon Ross St. Brown of the Detroit Lions. Similar situation here, just coming off of a low ceiling game. 8.7 fantasy points in week eight against the Titans in that blowout. Just two targets, two catches, seven receiving yards, one touchdown. Fortunately, somewhat maybe saved you this past week, but just coming off of a lower ceiling game. And we've seen one or two lower ceiling games in the past few weeks. And some of these blowout performances, 13.7 fantasy points against Dallas, just four targets, four catches, 37 receiving yards and a touchdown in that game. But Outside of the, uh, those two games and week one against the Rams, he's had 20 or more fantasy points in every game this year, averaging 16.6 fantasy points per game overall. It's not the best matchup this week against that Green Bay Packers secondary, but this is Amon Ross St. Brown. He can pop off at any moment against any secondary, against any corner, against any team. And overall, we've just seen the Lions really spreading the football around. Their offense doing all kinds of things, just completely smashing teams right now. But Amon Ross St. Brown's going to continue to be a huge part of this offense. Jamison Williams still uh, serving that suspension, which is going to be over next week, but he's also got off the field stuff going on. Who knows what's going to happen there? And Amon Ross St. Brown, no matter what, is the clear cut number one target in this offense towards the end of the season. They're going to be pushing for high playoff seeding, maybe the number one overall seed in the NFC. So Amon Ross St. Brown, if you're able to take advantage of this buy low window, absolutely do so. And I will also say I love Amon Ross St. Brown's total reception line on underdog right now, sitting at six and a half total receptions. He's only hit that once in the past three weeks, but that was against the Minnesota Vikings in a good game script in a big divisional game and that's what I think we're going to get this week against the Green Bay Packers he had eight catches against the Vikings two weeks ago so I would be heading straight to underdog to take the over on Amon Ra's reception line don't forget guys all new users who sign up with promo code the catch are getting a free NFL pick em for the week take your free pick em take Amon Ra's total receptions once those both hit you're going to triple your cash entry and on top of that underdog is also giving all new users who sign up with promo code the catch a 50 percent deposit match up to one thousand dollars next up we have josh downs of the indianapolis colts who's not necessarily coming off a bad game by any stretch as he had 22.2 fantasy points this past week scored a touchdown but just four catches 109 receiving yards ah, i think the big thing here though when it comes to josh downs is there's kind of this like 
feeling about the Indianapolis Colts that you can't really trust these wide receivers for some people, even regardless of who the quarterback is. And now it might be easier to try and trade for Michael Pittman, which I don't think he's an awful buy low. But the player that I want to try and get on my team is Josh Downs because I do think he will be the more viable fantasy option as the season progresses and provide higher overall ceilings. But the reason why he makes the video, even though he's coming off of a high ceiling game this past week, is because he's dealing with an injury. He's got a toe injury. And at the same time, Michael Pittman is dealing with a back injury. So with Joe Flacco as he's starting quarterback until further notice for the Colts both of these players dealing with injuries both of them have a great matchup this week against the Minnesota Vikings secondary giving up the 31st most fantasy points to the wide receiver position take advantage of these injuries because especially if one of these two players are out this week that buy low window now opens presents itself we always want to try and uh, trade for players while they're you know dealing with these non-serious injuries so if you can take advantage of josh downs this week even though he's coming off of a big game try to get him on your team as we go into week nine all right, next up is Nico Collins of the Houston Texans, who we have not seen in action since week five of the season when he got injured against the Bills. Only had two catches in that game, but had 15.8 fantasy points, 78 receiving yards, and a touchdown. He's expected to be back in the next week or two. So now is the time to try and get Nico Collins and take advantage of this buy low window, especially if the fantasy manager in your league who owns him is you know dealing with losses has other issues on their roster try and get nico collins before he starts playing again because nico collins has been absolutely balling out this season averaging 21.3 fantasy points per game he's still the wide receiver 12 on the season and he's missed the last three weeks and is going to miss this week as well he should be back against detroit in week 10 but it could take an additional week but with stefan diggs now out for the season I think that the Texans are going to definitely push for Nico Collins to be cleared and ready to play in week 10 against the Detroit Lions. So if you can go out, make an offer for Nico Collins that doesn't hurt your roster. If your league mate who owns Nico Collins is hurting in other spots as well, and there's been so many injuries this year, that's definitely a realistic uh, scenario. Get Nico Collins on your roster before he returns in week 10 because he's going to keep dominating fantasy football especially without Stefan Diggs for the rest of the season for the Texans all right another stud veteran wide receiver who's been dealing with injuries is Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers got a little banged up with a rib injury in week eight against Dallas and now the Niners are on bye week in week nine so you guys know I love trading for players during their bye week or coming off of their bye week or dealing with a non-serious injury and we got basically all that going on with Debo Samuel right now and I like uh, buying low on Debo going into week eight as well with the pneumonia thing going on and everything then a nice matchup against Dallas and if he did he had 12.6 fantasy points for you in week eight not too bad considering he had to leave that game so now we look at Debo Samuel on bye week averaging 11.9 fantasy points per game in our on the season excuse me and overall we still have a lot of holes on this offense overall although Jawan Jennings will be expected back and then we might get CMC back but overall those things could be good for Debo Samuel if this offense can really start to get rolling although they haven't been bad all things considered so right out of the bye week they get Tampa Bay Seattle Green Bay a nice little stretch there overall pretty good matchups outside of Green Bay overall uh, good game scripts as well and Debo Samuel has a fantastic playoff schedule he gets the Rams the Dolphins and the Lions Dolphins not so good but overall those other two matchups good and Debo one of these players regardless a matchup can always pop he brings that nice upside he's a player that I like to own in fantasy because you just throw him in the flex cross your fingers it's not always fun to watch, but most of the time the stat line is good at the end of the day and the upside is there. We really break it down. Debo's been great this season. In every game he's played, he's had 10 or more fantasy points except for week five against Arizona. He's had 18 or more fantasy points in three out of six total games he's played on the season. Debo is still that guy. It's just been a rough season or a start to the season for the Niners. He's had a lot of the injury bug. He'll be fine. He's a nice upside player that I think there's a very good buy low window on that you guys can take advantage of right 
now. All right, looking at a couple running backs, let's look at Kenneth Walker coming off of his worst performance so far on the season. And this is exactly what we want to look for in terms of a buy low window, 8.5 fantasy points and a good matchup against the Bills. The game script didn't really benefit him there, but this Bills run defense has not been good. I was expecting a lot more out of Walker this past week as were a lot of people, as he's a top 15 fantasy football running back. Even with missing two games on the season, he's averaging 20 fantasy points per game. That stretch between weeks four and seven, 14.6 or more fantasy points. And every matchup, a ceiling of 33.6 fantasy points in that stretch as well. So Kenneth Walker has been great. He's going to continue to be great. He gets involved in the passing game. He's a very good runner. He's just coming off of a down week where the Bills absolutely shut them out. But uh, he's got a great matchup this week against the Rams. And overall, for the rest of the season, has some good matchups as well. So the Seahawks, one of these teams, kind of in a weird state right now. But Kenneth Walker, no matter what's going to be the heartbeat of this offense. So if you can take advantage of this poor game in Week 8, Absolutely do so because I think Kenneth Walker is set for a huge week in week nine at home against the Rams. And I would also be heading straight to underdog to take the over on Kenneth Walker to score a touchdown this week. He's scored a touchdown in every game he's played in this year except for week five against the Giants and this past week against Buffalo. It's a smash matchup this week. He should absolutely stumble into the end zone at home against the Rams. So head straight to Underdog and don't forget, guys, new users who sign up with the promo code catch that link is down below, are getting that free NFL pick em for the week. Take your free pick em, pair it with Walker to score a touchdown. Once both of those lines hit, you're going to automatically triple your cash entry. And while you're doing that, Underdog is also going to give you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000 when you sign up with promo code the catch all right next up is alexander madison of the raiders who i think is a really good buy low because overall like madison's perceived value is still really low and realistically he's been pretty dang solid on the season Di or single digits excuse me just three times on the season weeks two four and this past week against kansas city but in week two against baltimore he still scored a touchdown then we really break it down a little bit further I, those single digit performances came against baltimore cleveland and Kansas City, three teams in the top 10 against the running back position in terms of fantasy points allowed. Kansas City's number one. He still had 9.4 fantasy points against them. He's the starting running back here. He's the running back to own from a fantasy perspective. Zamir White's been awful. He's banged up with a quad injury. He's only had five touches in the last two weeks when Madison's had 14 plus touches in his last two games. It's not a smash matchup or anything against Cincinnati this week, but Madison's just a solid player who has very low perceived value because he's on the Raiders. He was a waiver wire pickup. He hasn't had the highest ceiling this season either, but he's just been solid. And bear in mind, he has a fantastic playoff schedule. It's a little tough at first against Atlanta, but then he gets the Jags and the Saints, two of the worst run defenses in the entire NFL. So Madison, a solid bench player that you can add to your roster, I think almost essentially for free, who could pay off, especially down the stretch as we get closer to the fantasy playoffs. And last but not least is my guy Rashad White. Not coming off of the worst performance here in week eight, 15.7 fantasy points, six targets through the air, five catches, 38 receiving yards, a receiving touchdown, just 29 yards on the ground, but did average 4.83 yards per carry. And I think the important thing here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is that we have a backfield by committee. Yeah, Bucky Irving is going to get targets. He had seven this past week. He's going to get touches. He had nine touches this past week. But both of these guys are going to be utilized, especially with no Mike Evans, no Chris Godwin. And even when uh, Mike Evans does return, they're still going to need Rashad White to catch some passes and do some things in this offense, just like Kate Otten's had to step up as well. Now, it's a bad matchup this week against the Kansas City Chiefs. So, a, I do think that the buy low window could kind of extend itself here if Rashad White has a poor week. But B, I also think that there's a good opportunity 
for Rashad White to be heavily involved this week because it's going to be more difficult for the Bucks to run the football. I think we're going to see more passes to Rashad White and even potentially Bucky Irving. So I still think this could be a good week overall for Rashad White, who everyone hates. Everyone loves to hate on Rashad White. I'm always, I've am always i been the Rashad White stand for a couple years. I get it. You guys can make fun of me, but he's averaging 13.3 fantasy points per game. Uh, he has double digits in four games so far on the season. He missed week six. So overall, he's been pretty solid. Yes, Bucky Irving's affecting things here. We've seen Sean Tucker do things, but I still think there's a nice role in this offense for Rashad White as the season progresses. And I will say he has a pretty overall solid schedule after that week 11 bye week. The Giants, you just got diced up by Najee Harris, although they've been pretty good on the season. Then the Panthers, good. The Raiders, good. The Chargers, tough. The Cowboys, good. The Panthers, good. Rashad White, I think, is a very strong player to trade for now before we head into week nine of the season. And that'll do it for today's video. There are eight players to go buy low on right now before week nine of 2024 fantasy football. Don't forget, guys, I'm answering all fantasy football questions in the comments section down below. So if you guys need anything whatsoever, Drop me a comment. I'll make sure I answer every comment before Sunday's slate of games. And don't forget, as the week goes on, we've got everything that you could possibly need to help you dominate week nine of 2024 fantasy football here on the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the content. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.